Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His grace. Hello and welcome once again to Understanding Islam, your show that explores the faith. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessing be upon His last messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His companions, and those who follow the right path. Dear brothers and sisters, family plays a great role in everybody's life. It is the first thing we know in our lives, and it has an everlasting effect on us and on our futures. That is why Islam has laid great emphasis on family life and marriage relationships. Islam calls for many points that strengthens and reinforces social relationships, such as the importance given to the role of the family, treating parents kindly, maintaining good relations with other family members, seeing to the rights and needs of wives and children, etc. So, what are the basics for family in Islam? What are the main rules and regulations? How can the family be built and maintained? And as sadly happens sometimes, how can this relationship end? Islam brought with it many needed changes and fruitful reforms into the world. One of the most important social reforms carried out by Islam was the strengthening of the family, the bonds of marriage and the importance of relationship with kith and kin. In Islamic society, as in many other traditional societies, the family is extended to include grandparents, uncles, aunts and cousins, as well as in-laws. Many modern cultures and societies have lost the feeling and experience of the extended family, and this in turn affects the core family itself, leading to the disintegration of the family ties and the severing of children and future generations. To build a happy and strong family and a coherent society, Islam emphasizes the importance of the correct man-woman relationship, because they are the bases and pillars of the family. The marriage tie or contract is described as a strong pledge and a firm covenant. Allah the Almighty says, And how could you take part of the dowry when you have gone in unto each other, and they, the ladies, have taken from you a solemn covenant? Surah Nisa 4, verse 21. Marriage is an important part of the religion. The Messenger Wasallam said, Marriage is half of the religion. The marriage contract is drawn, according to the Islamic rules, to legitimize the physical acts within the marriage and to protect the rights of both partners and safeguard the rights of their children. In Islam, family life and marital relationship should be based on the following basics. Tranquility, trust, mutual understanding, love and intimacy, and mercy. Allah the Almighty says, and among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves, that you may dwell in tranquility with them. And he has put love and mercy between you. Verily, in that are signs for those who reflect. Surah Rome 30, verse 21. This verse stresses the need for men and women to live in mutual love and respect in order to create an atmosphere of peace for the healthy growth of the family. These three essentials, tranquility, love, and mercy, need the participation and willingness of both partners in order to be achieved. Tranquility is the basis for the general atmosphere of the house. Tranquility means peace and relaxation, and this can be reached when the family life is based on mutual trust and understanding. Love is the basis for the intimate relationship and emotional dealings within the family. Love needs to be made and maintained. It does not come from nothing, as some people think. We usually hear the phrase, love from the first sign. Well, such life is rare, and mostly it's an exhausting fantasy rather than the real healthy emotion that can be developed, maintained, and sustained. To succeed, love needs the participation of both parties. It needs their words and actions, their sharing and emotions, their giving and sacrifices for the sake of this great life experience. Islam calls for the relationship between husband and wife to be most intimate. The Holy Quran has described this intimate relationship so beautifully when it said that husband and wife are garment for each other. Allah the Almighty says, they, your wives, are remnant for you. 
and you are remnant for them. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, verse 187. Islam prohibits adultery and marital invalidity. And that is why Islam teaches and encourages both husband and wife to satisfy the needs of each other. Fulfilling each other's needs and desires is stated in the Holy Quran. We look to the same verse once again. Allah the Almighty says, It is made lawful for you to go unto your wives, that is to have intimate relationship, on the night of the fast in Ramadan. They are remnant for you, and you are remnant for them. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, verse 187. This verse is pointing to meeting each other's physical needs and fulfilling each other's desires. And that goes for both parties. Islam encourages the physical side of a marital relationship and treats it as a form of righteousness and obedience to Allah the Almighty. This relationship is a form of charity as described by the Messenger Wasallam, and there is a reward for it just like for other good deeds. The last basis for family in Islam is mercy. Mercy is the basis for the dealing and interactions within the family. Mercy is an important part of the religion, and Islam calls for all Muslims to show, practice, and extend this mercy to all people. Your family deserves the best part of your mercy. If somebody is showing mercy to strangers and dealing harshly with their own family, their priorities are misguided and their actions insincere. They are not being good and merciful persons. Your family should be the first to notice, feel, and experience your mercy. The Messenger وسلم, said, the best of you is the one who is the best to their family. So in Islam, husband and wife should live together in honor and harmony, in trust and mutual understanding, in love and affection, and thereby make home a place of peace and tranquility. Both should respect and be complementary to each other. For example, the Messenger وسلم, instructed the husbands to say goodbyes to their family when traveling and supplicate for them, just as they should supplicate and pray for him. The main object of these and other guidelines is to create a homogeneous, happy family that is looked to and looked at as a great model. This is what each and every Muslim family should aspire to and pray for. As Allah the Almighty taught us to pray and say, Our Lord, grant unto us wives and offspring who will be the comfort of our eyes. Surah Al-Furqan 25, verse 74. We have now covered the basics of good marital relationships and family life, but there is still much more to tell. Stay with us through this short break, and remember to email us on understandingislam at dmi.ae. See you soon. Welcome back to Understanding Islam. In Islam, both husband and wife have certain rights and duties. These rights and duties are not distributed as 50-50, but according to the abilities and responsibilities of each one, in the best just and fair way, and in accordance with their nature. There are many obligations on the husband, such as supporting one's family and paying the dowry of one's wife. Generally, the husband should also provide his family with their needs, proper shelter, clothing, food, health, and education, depending on his ability. In exchange, the wife should care for her family and husband's needs, having his children and raising them, protecting the property, and upholding the honor as best as she can. It is the duty of husbands to spend on their families, and men are encouraged to do that and promised great rewards for it. The Messenger وسلم, said, the best money a man spends is the money he spends on his family. Treating wives with kindness is part of the faith. As the Messenger وسلم, said, the most perfect in faith amongst believers is he who is best in manners and kindness to his wife. Muslims are also required to uphold blood relations by visiting their relatives and clearing family feuds by remaining in touch with one another and supporting one another. Some people do not take proper care of their families or spend enough time with them. This is not the correct way to gain rewards from Allah. Your family is more important than extra worship. Those who would spend their lives only in worship, forsaking their families, are also not practicing moderation or piety. 
as the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, your Lord has right on you, yourself has right on you, and your family has right on you. So give each party its well-deserved right. Last week we had a question from one of our viewers, Khalid, and he asked, I have a difficult time explaining why polygamy is permitted to my non-Muslim friends. Many of them have seen men with multiple wives who do not seem to treat them equally or have selfish motives for polygamy. What do you suggest, I tell them? Brother Khalid, as we all know, Islam is a complete code of life with rules and regulations to accommodate all people, times, races, and places. It accommodates for even the most extreme of circumstances, which can also apply to the rules of family and marriage. There are situations when the partners might not be compatible in all parts of the relationship, physically or otherwise. There are also social considerations such as severe underpopulation and times of war. One of the ways in Islam to solve such problems is allowing the husband to marry more than one wife, provided he fulfills a very important and very strict condition to treat them with justice and fairness. Allah the Almighty says, if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphans, then marry a woman of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then marry only one. Surah An nisa 4 verses 3. If the man knows he cannot treat the wives fairly, and he must consider this very carefully, then it is forbidden for him to marry another wife. There are many required aspects of justice toward the wives. The main aspects are spending, money, clothing, housing, and nighttime stay. So the man must be fair between his wives, dividing time, socializing, and showing intimacy. He is not allowed to spend more time with one wife than with the other. The husband should try to be as fair as possible. It is recommended that the husband be fair even with kisses and intimate relationship. The Prophet ﷺ warned the husband that does not treat his wives fairly, that he will meet severe punishments in the hereafter. Brother Khalid, I hope this helps to answer your questions and help you explain this to your non-Muslim friends. Polygamy is more restricting and difficult choice for a husband than monogamy, as he will need to be more careful with his time, gifts, showing affections, traveling and spending and not time stay. Polygamy is not actively encouraged in Islam and not widely practiced by Muslim. It is there for the severe situations that might require it. Dear viewers, it's time once more for a quick break. We will be back to discuss the unhappy event of divorce and marital difficulties in just a moment. Please remember to email us on Understanding Islam at dmi.ae with the topics you would like to see covered. Welcome back. Brothers and sisters, the marriage tie is a firm covenant and one of the greatest gifts to mankind in their lives. And it is for this very reason that uh, divorce is considered the most abhorrent of all permitted things in Islam. But life is not perfect and people are different. The Quran instructs that reconciliation should be encouraged between husband and wife if a dispute occurs between them to avoid the breakup of the family and separation of the children. However, a time may come when a partner cannot trust the other partner and then they may not be suitable for each other anymore. Marriage ties can be separated for a specific reason or for more general complaints by both the man and the woman. The marriage contract can end by one of the following, death, divorce, separation, khula, conditional divorce, invalidity or breaking of marriage contract, etc. The man can end it by divorce and the woman can end it by khula. More details on that later on. But I must repeat, divorce is considered the most abhorrent of all permitted things. The divorce becomes impermissible if one is sure it is going to lead to bad consequences such as the wasting of children and the extreme hurt to the wife. In Islam, divorce is supposed to be a wise and healthy solution for the benefit of both partners, carried out with kindness and good treatment as Allah the Almighty ordered. 
The couple are giving two separate chances of returning after a declaration of divorce before the last and final divorce is enforced. Divorce is perceived to be initiated by the man in Islam, but ending the marriage can also be initiated by the wife. This is called khula. Khula can be explained as a wife-initiated conditional divorce or separation. It is allowed in Islam, for Allah the Almighty says, a divorce is only permissible twice. After that, the parties should either hold together on equitable terms or separate with kindness. It is not lawful for you, men, to take back any of your gifts from your wives, except when both parties fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah. If you, the judges, do indeed fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah, there is no blame on either of them if she gives something for her freedom. That is what she gives to become free thereby. These are the limits ordained by Allah, so do not transgress them. If any do transgress the limits ordained by Allah, such persons wrong themselves as well as others. So it's Al-Baqarah 2, verse 229. The phrase, give something for her freedom, refers to the wife-initiated divorce or khula. When the husband is not doing his duties or does not give the wife her rights, and also when the wife does not want to live with the husband anymore, she can file a case for separation from her husband and returns to him the dowry he gave to her for marriage. Habiba bint Abdullah, the wife of Thabit bin Qais, عنهما, came to the Prophet وسلم, and she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I do not criticize his religion or mannerism, but I hate committing kufr in Islam by ignoring her husbands because of their incompatibility. Allah's Messenger said to her, Will you give him back his garden, that is his dowry? She said, Yes. Allah's Messenger said to him, Take back the garden and divorce her once. So, although the khulr is initiated by the wife, the actual separation is given by the husband except in some cases when the husband is obstinate and refuses to grant her divorce, then the judge interferes to either conciliate or separate. Muslim parents are responsible for the welfare of the whole family. The Prophet ﷺ said, each one of you is a supervisor, and each one of you is responsible for those that he supervises. And he said, a husband is the supervisor of his family, and he is responsible for those he supervises. The woman also has her share of responsibilities. As the Messenger ﷺ said, a woman is the supervisor of her hus husband's household, and she is responsible for those that she supervises. We pray to Allah the Almighty to grant us good families and offspring, and make us good for them, and make them good for us. Amin. And now we turn the show over to you, our dear viewers, and address your questions and queries from the past week. And we had a question from one of the viewers, Rima, and she is asking, why do children take the religion from the father, when it is typically the mother who cares for the children, raises them, and teaches them their faith? The father often is absent from the household, working to provide for the family, and the mother is the one who spends time with the children. That's a good question, uh, sister. Uh, first of all, uh, it is sometimes widely regarded that the uh, children follow the uh, religion of the father. However, there is a misconception in this matter. It is the right of children to choose the best for them in all matters. And one of that is the matter of the religion. So actually, the children follow the best religion from either parents, from the father's side, or the father's side. We have mentioned that Islam does not encourage interfaith relationships because it is usually not the best environment for children to grow in because it creates a dilemma for them due to all the differences that they see between the parents. However, the children will not follow specifically the father's religion but the best religion for, for them regardless from either side of the parents. Hope that explains it uh, for you, our dear viewers. Uh, now, for the rest of you, thank you very much for watching and see you next week, inshallah, God willing. As always, if you want your questions answered, email us at understandingislam at dmi.ae. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His grace.